Hi and welcome. I'm Mia from Mimo Design Laser Files and today I will show you how I designed these Christmas stamp cards, which was a part of the SVD Card Summit 2025. I will be using Canva and a little bit of Lightburn since I made this SVD file capable of both laser cutting and regular cutting machines like the Cricut. This project is a part of the SVD Card Summit 2025, which is a free online event, which is running from November 14th to November 16th. We are more than 25 amazing creators who will share tutorials, freebies, tips, and a whole lot more. So if you are interested in joining the event, I did place the link down below so you can sign up. With my own course, you will get this file for free. And I made a tutorial to show you how to paint and assemble, and also how I cut the project using my Creality Falcon A1. And in collaboration with Creality, I am actually giving away one of these Creality Falcon A1 laser cutter machines for free to a lucky participant. As a little bonus, I also dropped a 50% off discount to my Etsy shop where you can find more than 700 unique and original files for laser cutting. But let's show you how I designed this card. This is the finished design which I set up in Canva. I will start by saying that I don't usually use Canva for designing files, but the elements are really handy, especially if you don't know how to draw or design your own elements. So I will guide you through how I made this. I will go in and edit this in my Lightburn software, which is the software that I use for my lasers, but you can do this with any type of software since the functions are very similar to each other. The first thing you want to do is make a blank canvas. I did choose to go for an A6 size, which is the regular card size. My design, however, is not pure A6, which is why I prefer to design my own from scratch, so it's the perfect size of how I want it to be. I did use Pro Elements for this card. So for the next card, I'll actually show you how you can use it with the free elements instead. So you don't have to have the Pro version. As said, I will be finishing it up in Lightburn and I will be saving it as an SVG, which does require the Pro access. But First thing I did was to search for postage stamp. If you go to graphics, you can see all of them. So let's see if we can find one that is free. This one is, and this one is actually perfect for what I want to use it for. I do see that the frame here inside is curved, so I will choose to just color both brown or whatever color you want to pick, and I will manually make the frame, which I have up here. To make the frame, you go to shapes, and I will just pick a rectangle. I will stretch it to ever I want it to be. And I'll see if I can get it snapped to the center. I will make this white. And now I can go in and duplicate this one, but I will make it the same brown as I have on the back. So I will just make this smaller and make it the size that I want. Now it's time to decorate like I have up here. So you want to search for snowflake. If you want to decorate with snowflakes, you can use everything else. And again, I use this pro version. So let's see if we have a free one. Maybe one. That's cute. So I will just scale it down. And if you want another color of this, you can do that too. You can rotate it down here and I will duplicate this and I'll just make it a little smaller and move it up to the opposite corner. To type in some kind of text, I will go to text over here and add a text box. I will type in Mary, add in another and type in Christmas. That way I can arrange them if I want. And now I want to pick 
my funds. For Mary, I actually used this milestone fund. So let's reuse that. And you just enlarge it by stretching it. I will move it over here. And for Christmas, I used a fund called Amsterdam Free. So again, I'll stretch it, make it bigger, and I'll place it somewhere around where I think it would look great. So maybe here. And that's actually the finished design. If I were to sell this as a PNG for printouts or something like that, I could just save it as is. But I do want to turn this into a cut file, which is why I will be finishing it in Lightburn. The way you do that, I will pick my original file, is to go to share. You then choose download. And the nice thing about the pro version is that you can actually save as an SVG. So I will pick SVG. I will check off transparent background. That way I will not have the edge of the paper, if that makes sense. And I will choose current page and download. I have downloaded this before because I already finished this card. But this is my light burn window. And this is the software that I use for all my lasers and have designed a lot of files in. It's really easy to import your designs because you just go to your downloads and then you can drag over your SVG. So this is the SVG saved from Canva. I will go in and mark everything because I do want to resize this to be as close to the A6 size that I can. I can make it the same size in length, but I can in the width. And the width is 105 millimeters. I will lock my aspect radio and type in 105. The height was supposed to be 148 millimeters, but it's okay. It is as close as I can get it. So I will make everything the same color, which is black. So it's easier for you to see. And now it's time to arrange everything. My idea is to weld these two snowflakes to the frame and you can then layer a couple of loose snowflakes on top of the frame to create a little 3D effect. For my engraved card, I want to engrave the text, but I will make a outline text, which you can cut with your cry cut. So I will right click and on everything here and I will mark all my work and add them to a red layer. In the world of lasers, you have different layers that will do different things. So in my case, I always use black for cutting and red for engraving. Now that I have my engraved layer and I have this outer frame, I want to group these two together. And I now can move these aside because this will be my back piece. The frame, I do want to cut the snowflakes loose. So I will choose both of them. I will right click and I will duplicate and I'll just move these inside my frame. So I don't have a lot of wasted material. Probably have to change them in the opposite direction here. So now that I have these inside my frame, it's time to weld these two snowflakes to my frame. First of all, I want to group the entire frame, which I do by right clicking. And then I will choose both my snowflakes here. And in Lightburn, you have something called Boolean Assistant. I need to group these two together as well. So I'll just group my snowflakes. But now I can click my snowflakes and the frame and I can go up to the Boolean Assistant. And this will give me all of the options for welding my piece together. I do want to weld it by union A or B. So I'll hit OK and it's ready to cut. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and also place a comment if you are attending the SVT Craft Summit 2025. I will be happy to see you there. Besides my own tutorial giveaway and discount codes. I'll also be going live to tell a little bit more about laser cutting machines. So in case you haven't signed up already, make sure you do. It is free. You can buy the all access pass, but it's not a requirement. So make sure to check out the link in the description. 
and I hope to see you there.